Hi, right, good morning guys, thanks for joining me. What I'd like to do in today's video is just talk a little about our carbon steel and the ways which I like to maintain it in the field and also just a few of the things which I bring with me just to make that job just a little bit easier. What I've got laid out in front of me are the steel tools which I use on a regular basis. So just starting off with the axe, now when it comes to axes or ratchets, you know, I don't tend to be as critical as what it would be with a knife. I just make sure that the axe is nice and sharp and I haven't got any surface rust or certainly any deep rust, you know, starting to form in the metal itself. Then also, you know, just looking at the wooden handle, I also like to look after the wood, just like I do with the metal. And these little cheap little folders, now the cheaper the steel the more susceptible to rust that they're going to become and with this one here you can just notice quite a bit of deep rusting just started here and also quite a bit of staining and also a little bit of patina just moving on here now to the open now again a cheap piece of carbon steel I think you paid around about £89 for one of these knives and again you know any kind of knife we could have heart attack over this there's a lot of residue here off the ferro rod then also a little bit of tar you know just where I've been using it just in the fire itself so this again you know something which I'd like to clean up and also just look after the wood just on the handles and just moving on to the main belt uh, knife itself this is a one tool steel this is the LT right GNS and again when it comes to uh, choosing your steels perhaps if I was closer to the coast or a lot of my work has been done over by the coast I'd be looking for a steel which is going to be a lot more rust resistant you know things like stainless steel you know some of the stupid steels but also something similar to like A2 steel again which will rust but it's a lot more forgiving than things like your ones or your 1095s just like everything else to do with bushcraft and survival, there's a myriad of products out there which you can actually use for maintaining the high carbon steels. And what I've got out in front of me is a selection of things which I tend to keep in the house, but obviously I've just brought out just to show you just as a quick demo. And what I tend to do is just carry a few of these items just in a canvas bag here, which I have to use as my field sharpening kit and also a little kit which I can have to use just to maintain the steels. So if I just quickly run through the items, just explain just a little bit about what they are. Just starting off here just with the Tormac. Now Tormac paste is absolutely phenomenal stuff. This is your owning compound if you wanted to use it in conjunction with a strop for actually strop your knife. But as a medium itself it's absolutely brilliant for fetching off rust or any kind of staining, patinas, that kind of thing. Just in one of the little cans here, this is just something like lip balm. Again, you can just actually just put this just on the steel, just to allow it to just make it a little bit more waterproof or water resistant, just to shed that water, just to stop it from rusting. And then auto solve, this stuff's been used, I don't know, I've seen this since the 70s, it's what people used to use on the uh, on the cars for getting rid of rust. And also used on stainless steels and other steels just to make sure, you know, that it's kept nice and clean. But also this also uh, leaves a film on there which uh, stops any other kind of rust from producing or forming over time. Now with auto saw it's quite a big tube, so again what you can actually do is just decant it down and just screw it just a little bit in a small container, and that's the kind of way which you want to go, just to keep your metals clean. Just on the bottom here now, we've got a little Nagura stone. Now again, if you want to keep things natural, you can actually just mix this uh, with water and form a little bit of a sludgy, which I'll show you in a second. And this is used mainly in conjunction with the wet stones which you have in the house, you know, when it comes to any big sharpening projects which you may do. And then if you wanted to, you could use wire wool, or you could have to use one of these little scotch pads. These are abrasive, so again, you could have to use it just to fetch any dirt or rust off the steel. And if you wanted to clean or basically just sand away any of the old lacquers or varnishes that you may have any wooden handles, that would come handy for that as well. Just in the bottle here, this is boiled linseed oil. Again, for looking after the woods mainly, we could actually put this on the blade just to uh, reduce any kind of rust which you may get. All the way down to uh, a proper little kit itself. Now these able kits, you know, could be used for camping, fishing, hunting. But again, they do come with a few little products in them, which I'll show you in a second, which can also be used just to maintain your steel. So like I mentioned, when it comes to carrying the field sharpening kit or the steel maintaining kit, I do like to carry it in an heavy duty canvas bag. It's not too heavy, there's not too much bulk there, you know, I can actually just put this in a small pocket just on the outside of the pack, you know, and I don't really realise it's there. So just tipping the items out. Now when it comes to this kind of thing, like I've just showed you, you know, there's a myriad of products which you can actually buy. And it becomes personal to you, you know, just the things that you want to use, but also the kind of steels that you've got, you know, will be dictated to then by how you have to look after them. So just starting off here, diamond stone, just so I can maintain, you know, just the edges on the steels. And again, the same can be said for the strop. Now also with the strop, you can actually use that if you wanted to just put a little bit of compound on it. And you can actually just rub that on the metal itself just to get rid of any kind of staining or rusting. A DC4, now this comes in handy for sharpening. And also, which I'll show you just in a second with the Nagura stone. And a steel wool and also a little scotch pad. Again, for you know removing dirt, rust and also just being able to do just a little bit of work just on the wooden handle. And then a bottle of linseed oil. A small little piece of uh, cotton cloth just for applying you know any of the products and then just at the bottom of the pouch here 
I've just got uh, a little tin there. I can see with lip balm in it. Again, that can be used obviously for putting on your lips, but also just maintaining the steel. And then just one of those uh, big tubes there, which was the auto sole. Like I mentioned, you can decant and just actually squirt just a bit in uh, one of these little cans. So the first knife, which we're going to take a look at and uh, just get cleaned up with this little open owl. And as you notice there, like I said, there's quite a bit of marking just off the ferro rod, which again, you know, is no big deal. And a lot of this here is just tar, you know, just from the smoke residue just have been messing about in the fire. So physically, you know, there's nothing wrong with this knife. It just looks untidy. And like I mentioned, you know, if a knife really was to look at that, you know, they'd probably have a heart attack. So just looking at what needs to be done, it's just a case of just actually just cleaning the staining off and perhaps just applying just a light coat of oil just to stop any kind of rust forming. Or if you have got a little bit of rust just starting to form, just to stop that just progressing any further. So if we just take a quick close up of the blade, this is what I was referring to. Just a little bit of staining and marking just off the ferro rod and just a little bit of blackening and tar just where it's been in the fire. So you know this is a nice simple little job. All we're going to use is that little bit of the auto saw and perhaps just a little bit of steel wool and this will come off no problem. Now what you've got to be careful of if you're using things like auto saw, you know this stuff isn't food safe so this is going to be your main knife for preparing your food. Then perhaps what you want to be looking at is other things to use. Now again the same can be said with things like linseed oil. I've just been reading about you know the fact is linseed oil food safe or not but this knife you know isn't my food knife anyway so I'm not that concerned about it but what I'm trying to get at you know if it is going to be your food prep knife that you're looking after just make sure that you're going to use stuff on it that is going to be safe for you to wear uh, to consume so like I just mentioned a little bit of wire wool and a little bit of this auto saw if it was the got auto saw we got uh, the, the tormec you know that uh, is a very similar kind of thing and in fact I think the grit ratio in the tormec is just a little bit more you know so you'd actually clean it off just a little bit quicker so what we're going to do, just get a little bit of the auto sole just on the steel wool and then we're just going to give it a few wipes over and just actually see just how it comes up. Obviously just be careful as you're you know, doing this kind of thing, the last thing you want to do is actually you know, run your finger just along the cutting edge and uh, you know, find out you've got more of a job on your hand you know, by having to apply a bit of first aid at the same time. But as you can see there, you know, just by the blackening that's coming off and it's actually cleaning this up quite well and then one thing I'd always do is sharpen it after because uh, you know when you start dragging this stuff down the cutting edge itself it does sometimes you know start taking uh, the edge down so uh, you will need a quick sharpen just once you finish the cleaning process Once you're happy there that uh, you know the knife's as clean as you need it and all that residue has been taken off, just in case then I'm just using an old rag or you know like we've got here, just a little bit of cotton cloth, just to uh, wipe any of the excess residue off there and just make sure you know that the blade's as nice and as clean as you need it to be. And as you can see there, that's come up quite well. It's got rid of any staining, like I mentioned, for any of the little pieces of rust or little bits of rust that may have been starting to form. It's actually just got rid of those as well. Now, if you wanted to, you could actually continue and just carry on by doing the handle. You could actually just use a little bit of that wire wool and just actually, you know, just scrape it down, just get rid of the, uh, the original lacquer or varnish which was on it. And just actually use some of that linseed oil just to help to keep that wood nourished. Just taking a look at this other knife which we've got now, this is just a cheap knife, I paid around about £5 for it, but it comes in handy for work, and it's one which I just keep in my way to pocket, and the reason now that a lot of this rust is starting to bed quite deep down into the blade itself, and also why this handle's just starting to dry out and crack. So we're just going to go through the same process, we're just going to use the auto solid wire wool, just see if we can actually tidy this up and just get rid of this rust. If not, get rid of it, you know, clean it up and just prevent it from actually going any further into the blade, and also we're just going to feed this handle here, again, just when it gets wet just to stop it from swelling starting to dry out after and then just reduce the splitting which may happen to it over time Once you're satisfied with how the knife's turned out, you know, the blade's clean now. We know it's protected just through uh, using the auto saw itself, you know, that rusting's gone and I've also just cleaned down this handle slightly. It's just a case if you wanted to, like I mentioned, you could just feed the handle. It's just a case of just using just a little bit of linseed oil. And once the handle's got a nice sufficient coating on, you can just wipe any excess off just by using an old rag. And that way then it's going to stop it from gumming up and just stop things from sticking to it. And if you wanted to, you could actually cover the blade just in the linseed oil itself. 
but uh, you know I'd rather use just a lighter oil if possible again just stop it from gumming up you know what happens with this stuff is once it starts to dry it kind of polymers and then things will stick to it and you may find that it will start to gum up you know just in the workings there a little bit you know but just for a quick fix you know just to uh, apply just a little bit wouldn't be too much of a problem but again just making sure that you wipe off any excess just to stop any of the gumming when it comes to maintaining the steel on the belt knife, you know, I could have used exactly the same method as what I've just done. But just show you just another way, just by using the Nagura stone. Now what a Nagura stone is, it's a very fine grit stone. And you have to use this in conjunction with your wet stones. And imagine you've got an 8,000 wet stone. You'd have to just rub this on top of it and this would create a slurry then, which you'd have to use. A, just to help to uh, clean the steel. What it's also going to do is help just to polish that edge, as it is when you're sharpening the knife. So just looking at this, like I mentioned, a little bit of rust in here. Now this was actually just out in the rain yesterday, and I must have just put it back in the sheath west. And this is what happens with the one tool steel. Like I mentioned, no big deal. This is just a little bit of surface rust. So when it comes to cleaning the top of the Nagura stone, we just need another stone to rub it on, and a little bit of water just to create the slurry. Then once you've got your slurry produced like that, it's just a case of just applying it just to your finger. And I don't have to tell you, just watch your finger just as you uh, rub it next to the cutting edge. And what this slurry will do, it's just uh, an abrasive action. It's just going to help just to clean the stain, you know, there's a little bit of rust off here. And then also uh, just start polish the rest of the knife. But unlike the Tormek or the Auto Sol, this doesn't leave any kind of residue behind, which is going to protect the knife for us. So once you've actually done this, it'll be a case of just drying the blade off and then just putting a light coat of oil on it. Like I mentioned just before we put it back into the sheath. As you can see now that Nagura stone, you know, has got rid of that rust in. It's also brought that edge back up like a mirror. So you know, I'm quite happy with that just because of just making sure it's thoroughly dried. And then we could actually just coat the blade with an oil, like something like the linseed oil. Or again, if you're going to use it for food, perhaps something like olive oil or perhaps cooking oil. Or one thing I have to do, carry mainly in my shooting kit. It's one of these Able kits, which I just showed you at the beginning there. And this has got various different oils in and things like Neat's foot. You know, so you could actually use that for leather, but also uh, protecting the steel if you wanted to. So what I'm going to use on this one is just a light gun oil. It doesn't have to be anything special, just in case you're just using just one of the little containers just out of them. And any kind of oil is going to do. It's just obviously just protecting that steel and just also just making sure that it's going to repel any kind of moisture in the future. And finally, when it comes to maintaining the axe, you could use any of those other methods which I just showed you just on the other knives. But one thing which I like to do is just rough and ready, just using one of these green scourers. I'll just give it a quick wipe over just to get rid of any dirt, any kind of rust, any kind of uh, patina. And then you could actually just do the same just on the handle, like I've mentioned. And then with this, it's just a case you could either use WD-40. You could use the, uh, the linseed oil. You could use the gun oil. You know, because 99.9% .9 of the time, I'm sure one of these axes or axes isn't going to be used to process food down. So then it's just a case of just making sure you're just protecting the steel from the elements. And then one thing you could also do, just that to protect the leather mask itself, just to stop that from drying out and also cracking. So there we have it guys, after 10 or 15 minutes work, you know, these tools have come up quite well. Hopefully the camera will be able to pick the difference up. You know, this knife, when we first brought it out, this blade was completely blackened. And the same with this knife here, we had that big uh, rust stain here. And the handle itself was actually dried out completely, you know, to the point that it was going to start splitting. So now we've got confidence, we've actually put these tools away. And next time we pull them out, they should still be in the same condition as what they are at the moment.
So there we have you guys, just a quickie on how I to maintain my tools in the field. If it is you're just starting off in the world of bushcraft, like I mentioned at the beginning, you know, there's hundreds of different things out there on the market which you could use. But what I like to do is just keep these kits as simple as possible and just carry the things which you need. So like always, I'll just leave them to say thanks a lot for you stopping by and watching the video, like always. Until next time, you take care and I'll see you again.